I became the head coach of the New York Giants after the 2023 season to hopefully try to rebuild this roster and bring them to the playoffs. But unfortunately, we were 77 overall, and the entire season was marked by quarterback controversy between Drake May and Daniel Jones, as well as riddled with injuries as we couldn't keep our team healthy late in the season. But going into year number two, we have the entire offseason ahead of us, as well as a stacked draft class that includes the likes of Travis Hunter, as well as Cade Klubnik coming out of Clemson. Going forward, each episode is going to be four to five games, and we're going to try to document this team's journey to success but we have to kick it off with a strong offseason and a good first couple of weeks of the season. As for last season, though, we did finish up with some good pro bowlers on our roster. Saquon Barkley was able to make it. Jalen Hyatt actually got snuffed, but Dexter Lawrence was going to be able to make it. And even though he had three kick returns, Darian Evans wasn't able to make it to a pro bowl, so I think he completely got snuffed. But luckily, Deontay Banks and James Williams were able to make it. But Drake May wasn't the only rookie quarterback who struggled, as every single rookie quarterback didn't make it to the playoffs. And this Super Bowl is going to be Dallas taking on the Buffalo Bills. And ultimately, Josh Allen was actually able to take home the trophy. So going into the offseason, the first thing we need to do is figure out what players we want to bring back in our re-sign period. And with three player options to accept, I'm going to go ahead and take all of these guys' options. Evan Neal, though, needs to play better this year. And Darrington Evans is somebody I definitely want to bring back, but at age 27, this contract's too much, so I'm going to let him hit free agency. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with Tommy DeVito as well as some of the other guys on our roster. Lincoln Tomlinson, I'm going to let walk. But Jamie Gillen, I'm going to let him hit free agency as well. And if we let Eric Gray walk, that means we're going to enter free agency with only one running back on roster and I think that's going to be okay and the only player I'm going to try to bring back is Ladd McConkey. we picked him up halfway through the season but he's going to test for agency as well so our re-sign period is kind of a dud and going into free agency a lot of high overall players were actually let walk into it so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of players we can bring in in this one a big name wide receiver would be awesome to grab but I'm not sure any of these guys are going to fit our mold besides Nico Collins another tall guy who could replace Isaiah Hodgins would be awesome but I think our focus should be rebuilding our offensive line there's a lot of guys here and especially letting Lincoln and Tomlinson walk, this would be the, probably the smartest move for us. And so I think it's only right that we offer Tyron Smith a one-year deal. And that's going to allow us to move Evan Neal to the inside of the offensive line and maybe take him away from the tackle spot that he's been playing terribly in so far. JOK is an interesting prospect to bring in, especially at his age, but I don't think he's going to be able to play well in our 3-4 defense. But Jabril Peppers on defense is a very enticing prospect. Dane Belton broke out. Xavier McKinley's playing well as well as James Williams. So we could maybe build up one of the best safety cores and have them really spread out around the field for us. Run five safeties at once would be kind of cool and so I'm gonna try to offer him a one-year deal and it was a low offer so we are still the top on the leaderboard for him guard spot I want to bring in another low overall guy to try to compete with Cody Ford and Jack Nelson who have both played pretty terribly for us this year and I know Jalen Mayfield's had a rough career so far but maybe he can revitalize it here with us and while we're trying to bring in Jalen Mayfield I'm actually gonna trade to bring in another guard and that's gonna allow us to move away from Ben Bredesen but Boogie Basham as well as Grady Williams didn't get a lot of time for us this year so we're gonna make a move to bring in Kenyon Green and so while digging ourselves into a cap nightmare these are the guys that we offered but we only have 1.8 million left in cap and after the first day the only guy we were able to get was Tyron Smith and so that meant the only other offer that we're going to give out is going to be to Presley Harvin at punter and with nobody still signing and Jabril Peppers skyrocketing in value we're going to withdraw those offer we're going to save up the money right now and instead make sure our kickers set as Graham Gano actually retired after the season and going into day number two, Jake Elliott's the only one that took a contract with us. But finally, we have some players signed here as Ladd McCocky comes back. Eric Gray's going to come back. Albert O's brought in to be tight end number three for us. Calvin Joseph at corner, as well as Omari Thomas to come fill a backup D tackle spot. But I still need Presley Harvin to be our punter because I have no money left. At the end of stage two, our free agency class is finally set. It wasn't a lot of high overall players, but we did build out our roster enough. The only problem is money's going to be a big problem going into this next year. And looking at the mock draft right now, I thought we had pick number eight, but then Thanks to some losses from the Bears and the Texans, we're actually sitting at all the way number 12, and it has us taking Abdul Carter. And with money being a problem, I think our best solution is to finally say Drake Mays our starting quarterback and move on from Daniel Jones. And with the buyout clause after a year or two, it's going to give us enough money to be able to make this trade. Roman Wilson has to be tagged onto this deal to make sure the cap all works. And it is going to be accepted, so Desmond Ritter, who led the Falcons to another abysmal season, is going to get taken over by Daniel Jones at the starting job. And that's going to be exciting because there's one guy in this entire draft class I want to try to go after. And with the money saved, I'm bringing back Odell Beckham Jr. to hopefully get him a championship in a Giants uniform. On top of that, I'm bringing in some defensive linemen just in case Dexter Lawrence or Kayvon Thibodeau go down with injuries. And all of those guys are going to accept, so that's going to be huge for us. We also spent some extra money to bring in a mentor quarterback for Drake May going forward. So now that we have the third overall pick in the draft, it's time to jump in and see if we can nab Travis Hunter and see if he can make a big impact for us or will we get screwed over. And just to take the extra precaution, I'm going to do a private workout for him, but if he doesn't work out, I want to see Bear Alexander 
there. And then Benjamin Morrison out of Notre Dame because I want to make sure we get man-to-man -man corners. So first on the board is the Browns, and this is the pick that I'm worried about right now, and they're going to go ahead and take Air Alexander, so the other guy we scouted. And looking at the Patriots on the trade block, their needs are not corners, so I think we should be okay. This is just a fingers crossed moment. Hopefully this works out for us, and they do go Harold Perkins at middle linebacker. So that means we're going to go ahead and select Travis Hunter out of Colorado. He's going to play corner for us as well as wide receiver, maybe even return man, but I want to get him on the field as much as possible, and he is going to be ahead in development at 94 speed. And watching the next picks go by, Shadur Sanders is actually going to go over to Green Bay, and the Rams are going to take Kelvin Banks to be their new starting tackle, but the one I'm interested in is the Bears, and they go Walter Nolan. And with our pick in the draft, the Atlanta Falcons are actually going to go with Benjamin Morrison, so the other guy that we were interested in at corner. And this sucks, because at the pick right before ours, the Broncos actually go ahead and pick the tight end that I was actually looking at to draft. We don't have a third round draft pick from a trade made in season number one. We really have to make this pick count here. I like the way our offensive line is, and it really just comes to the fact, can Brevin Jordan and Daniel Bellinger be the tight end grouping for us? It's going to help carry this offense, because other than that, I'm looking at a left or right outside linebacker for us. I'm not going to lie, Jermaine Alexander out of Alabama looks like an interesting prospect. I really like his block shedding ability, but the awareness is what gets me. But we could bring in another James Williams at safety, six foot four, 220 pounds, Nick Emirari. And looking at his awareness and block shedding, that could be huge. We could build up the best safety combination in the league. So with Nicky Marori, James Williams, and Isaiah Simmons, I really think we could play positionless defense, so I'm going to go ahead and select him, and he is a normal dead, but 90 speed, 90 jumping, and fantastic strength to the safety position could be interesting for us. And that's one of the things, I love drafting based off body type, because we can get these guys overalls up, but we are not going to pick again until the fourth round. With Jeremiah Alexander gone, instead I'm going to go with Juwan Howard, I like his block shedding as well, and the B2C awareness could be good for us, but backing up Christian Harris, I think he has enough speed to be able to make it work. The 4.8 is a little scary, but I think we can get it. He may not be the best overall, but 77 speed isn't that great either. Get the rest of the roster. The overalls aren't the best, but I needed to fill in some spots on our team. But it's so awesome to see how good Travis Hunter is. A 79 overall coming in, and he's going to be around a 76 at receiver for us. Now, looking at our roster, we have superstars across the board because Andrew Thomas went up and Drake May was finally revealed. The wide receiver room is probably the best the New York Giants have ever had it in at least the past 20 years because we have Jalen Hyatt as well as Travis Hunter now playing receiver for us. OBJ is back and Keon Coleman's revealed as a star. On defense, Bryce Huff's going to be there, but Christian Harris went down from a star all the way to a normal and I don't know what I'm going to do with strong safety. Is Dane Belton going to continue to develop or do we start the rookie Nicky Memori? But we could also move James Williams over there and Travis Hunter is going to be our number three. He's going to be our slot corner, but I think our secondary is solidified. It's one of the best in the NFL and maybe our linebacking core went from the strongest to the weakest and that's all going to lead us now into the preseason where we need to see what players are going to earn a starting role. And so the preseason finished up. Drake May didn't get a lot of playing time because we know he's going to be our quarterback going into week number one. With Max Duggan struggling for the first two games, I brought in Sensen Bennett to try to compete in the third one, and that didn't go too well. The one thing that did stand out is Eric Gray only averaged 2.1 yards per carry, so maybe he dropped down to number three back, and Pierre Strong's going to get that number two slot going forward. But both Roman Wilson and Travis Hunter balled out for us at receiver, and Roman Wilson earned himself a roster spot because of this. And I'm a little worried because in the preseason, we averaged six points per game, but it's time to go now to make our cuts. Starting off, it's telling me to cut Odell Beckham Jr. I think KJ Handler is going to be the first cut that we're going to make. We have too many slot guys. And once again, Lad McConkey is not going to get too much time on our roster. And with Roman Wilson bowling out, actually Isaiah Hodgins will no longer be with us going forward. And Jack Nelson really struggled in our preseason games. So that means I do need to keep Ben Bredesen on our roster, at least for now, just in case he doesn't pan out. And Michael Hoyt's going to be another guy to go, but I don't like the other outside linebackers we have on our roster. Juwan Howard, I guess, made it by happenstance. But I think Corey Foreman is going to be backing up both of those positions. And even though Javarius Owens got an interception, I still have to move him back down to the practice squad. We just don't have the room, and that leaves one player left on our roster, and it's probably going to be Rashad Lawton. But instead of cutting him, I'll move him down to the practice squad, and that's going to be it. So we're going to go ahead here, take a look at our roster, and then jump into week number one. And so going into week number one, this is what our defensive roster is going to look like. Dane Belton's getting the start only because he's a star right now, but Nick Amawari is going to get some time, trust me. And that's because he's actually listed as a camp standout for us, and oh my, his face scan is absolutely horrible, but he's going to be one of those guys who could be a key piece of our defense moving forward and if we get at least two combined interception and pass deflections we can continue his breakout but on offense across the board we're going in with five superstars I did not expect to get this many of them already but Jalen Hyatt's breakout has been awesome for us in the first year so I hope we can continue that but I am burying Odell Beckham Jr. on our depth chart a little bit I want to give it up to the younger guys to see what they can do first Travis Hunter is also buried there but he's going to be our second slot receiver so we'll see how the rotation works with the auto sub going through the first four weeks of the season these are going to be our focus players Travis Hunter is going to be a big one for 
four is Nick Emerwari and Dane Belton. I'm leaving James Williams out of it, but I'm going to use our franchise points to unlock that for us soon. Going into week number one, we're actually starting off the rivalry between Drake May and Caleb Williams. And with us winning the toss, it's actually going to be Caleb Williams who's going to come out first for the commanders. They have Jahan Dotson back receiving, and he's just going to take a knee. So here he comes. And even though we have five superstars, I think our big goal is going to be our defensive prowess. I want to be able to stop Brian Robinson as well as hold Caleb Williams in this game. Well, it looks like they're going to be without Scary Terry, but this makes it so much more of a problem for us is across the middle, Stingley's going to have a good breakup. The type of playbook that we're bringing into this year is going to be a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. I want to be able to go after teams a lot and bring the blitzes and force the ball out fast. And Bobby O'Kay. Eric is able to get a sack. And so on third and 19, they're going to try to go deep here. But we got the pressure in the face again. And Bobby O'Karake is going to have another sack. And Caleb Williams goes down with an injury already. As much as I hate to see an injury, that's going to be awesome for us. Even though Travis Hunter is a great kick returner and punt returner, it's going to be Darrington Evans getting it with three kick returns last year. I have to do it again. So starting off, I want to get Saquon Barkley involved as quickly as possible. And he's got a good run up the middle. Finish with 1,700 all-purpose yards. And I want to be able to get the other kind of numbers again. And we're going to go up and over the top here. And that one's going to be bad at down so we're already in a third and four here and it's going to be a pull but the offensive line gives way green's going to be a big problem for us at that guard spot as the worst overall player with caleb williams going down kate klubnik's going to come in right away and they're going to go out to brian robinson early and i just completely whipped on that tackle but luckily bryce huff's able to finish it off and he had a pretty good career at clemson overall i mean he wasn't able to win a lot of games at least so far but it looks like he did enough to get onto the commander's roster but it's second and two and we're going to go ahead and bring a blitz in again a rookie quarterback we want to get in his face right away and they're going to go quick to the outside dame belton's not able to get there this is a great start we're getting dotted up by a backup running back but the blitz gets there again and Kayvon thibodeau's got one and a half sacks already in this game he only finished with eight last year so this is a good start so man to man across the board here on this third down i'm gonna try to get out nobody's open and they're gonna take a deep shot and banks couldn't get there and that's one of the best catches i have ever seen and this drive continues so the commanders have had nothing but sacks and deep pass plays that go their way and i was running with it and i changed up and travis hunter gets burned there and i forgot that's actually deontay banks we changed his number to three travis hunter is running 12 and 11 and i know it's phil sims number but because we had to create two players it's the only way i can make it work but now on the goal line here they're gonna go to a run and rodriguez got the edge and the washington commanders are gonna get in for the first touchdown so we definitely need to respond here and Darrington Evans is going to get a good kick return to start it. but this Drake May and Kale Williams rivalry can't have Oh, he's open out the seam. I'll say what I'll say later, but Keon Coleman's got a good grab. But it can't have Kate Klubnik coming in and sweeping the victory out from underneath of us. After the good pass, we're going to go to the run here, and our offensive line gets burned again. Green cannot block. But I want to try to run behind him one more time. We're going to get the cutback lane, but big man is there in the middle. That's Jonathan Allen. And so that means we're already in a third and 11 here. And if we can get Wondell Robinson and jumping up, almost intercepted, and we're going to have to punt this football away again. Coming back out, we need a big play. We need to stop, but Brian Robinson's had nothing going for him so far but that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter and the commanders so far have had our number i think the way we win this game is just by running the football but they're going to go quick to the outside here good tackle by dane belton we remember we need to get him two interceptions if we want a chance at a breakout again but with how the commanders are playing this is going to be a difficult thing to do and we're going to come back to it across the middle and they have another good grab and so Cade klubnik already is eight for eight in this ball game here and now brian robinson's got a hole and i wasn't expecting the run unless we could give a chase deontay banks is able to bring him down but they're all already inside the goal line and I was completely expecting that to be a play action and playing against the AI on the hardest settings makes this very very difficult as they run up the middle here and we're able to bring him down so now on third and goal they're going to go back to the air and I think we got it all covered up but on the corner of the end zone Dane Belton's going to be the one to let up a touchdown it was man to man across the board and I was fully expecting a run so with us having no answer for the commanders this is where we need to put a good drive together here and Saquon Barkley's going to start us off but Tyron Smith our biggest free agent already goes down with an injury in this one so that means Joshua Izaditsu is going to come in and we got no thing and we're gonna try to throw this away and that's gonna be an intentional grounding call i swore i was out of the tackle box on that one so we're already in a third and long here and i'm gonna try to go out to jalen hyatt on the corner and that one's gonna be batted down and this is not the start i wanted heading into this season and just one play in the commanders already have good field position and cave on thibodeau drops an interception that could have been a make or break play for us in this ball game but on third and one we need a stop and they're gonna go to the run to the outside and we cannot bring him down he's actually breaking tackles and we're just gonna continue to bring the blitz on this team here brian robinson and 
know, we're going to be able to bring him down with Michael McFadden. And he's actually garnering a lot of major trade interest, but I'm not going to do anything just yet. But that's going to be another missed tackle from our team. And Singletary is eventually going to save a touchdown. But Abe Klubnik is absolutely beating us up right now. Man to man was the answer last year, but maybe it's not the answer this year because across the board, we're just losing. I'm thinking about moving to more zone coverage right now because usually our answer has been man as Brian Robinson is going to take this one all the way into the end zone. We've been running man to man coverage. It worked for us all last year, but so far we've been absolutely torched across the board. We just need some spark. And last season it was Darrington Evans who was able to give it to us, but he's got nothing here. But I want to go back to our roots here and just get Saquon Barkley involved in the run game. And he's going to have enough here for first down and more. And we're just going to continue to feed him here up the middle, but our offensive line cannot do anything. We only have 10 plays so far in this game on offense, but in total, the Washington Commanders have 15 pass plays alone as Saquon Barkley is going to help us pick up another first down, but we're now past the two minute warning and I just want to get a score here and be able to hold them. And we did get this one off. I didn't think it was going to work and we're going to cut this to the outside and maybe we lose a couple yards and Saquon Barkley is actually going down with an injury, grabbing his side. So in comes in Pierre Thomas. I realize I meant Pierre Strong, but also Eric Gray's coming in as well. Wondell Robinson is going to have a catch to the side and there is going to be a flag for a late hit out of bounds. And these are the kind of breaks that we're going to need to win this ball game. And with Saquon Barkley just happening from cramps, all he needs to do is drink some water because we need to bring him back into this game desperately. But we're going to try to take a shot to the end zone. Actually, we're just going to dump it off to Brevin Jordan. And with hurry up being called, they're stacking the right side. We're just going to run inside zone, but Jonathan Allen is absolutely dominating us. And I guess this is what it's like playing Dexter Lawrence on the inside because this is absolutely atrocious. We're going to have to Saquon Barkley again. He's going to have enough for the first down breaking two tackles. And my hope is on this boot slide, we're going to have Wondell Robinson open and he's going to be able to catch it. Can we get a good juke move? He breaks one, but with 55 seconds left, I'm going to let this clock run a little bit more. My hope is the double team between Andrew Thomas as well as Kenyon Green can work here and run this one up the middle, but there's absolutely nothing going. But on third and gold, they're actually not stacking the box at all. So I'm going to risk it one more time. We have to be able to try to run this one in and we just get stopped. So not what we wanted at all. I'm going to go ahead and take the field goal here with our new kicker, Jake Elliott. Welcome to the roster. And he's got a first points of the season. And it took all the way to the second to actually put these points on the board. But so far, this game has been atrocious for us. We don't have any turnovers, but our offense just isn't working. But that touchdown is going to take us into halftime. And you see across the board, the Washington Commanders have had their way running the football so far. We start with the ball here in the second half. And I want to continue to try to lean on the run. But Saquon Barkley, 9 for 18 so far in this game. So that just means we're going to need to go to the air here to try to get it to work. And underneath, Jalen Hyatt's got the first big catch this season. He finished last season with 1,100 yards. As Saquon Barkley finally gets his first good run. But he averaged almost 20 yards of reception. And that's only because we had the ability to just run him deep all the time. As Barkley's going to break one tackle and get enough for another first. But football falls out and luckily Brevin Jordan was able to follow. So this drive starting out hot for us. We're going to go out to Wondell Robinson if we can't beat the guy to the edge. Jalen Hyatt not the best known for blocking but the air attack might just be how we win this football game. We're going to go out to Saquon Barkley again up the field and that one's actually held on but it's going to bring up a third and seven. And we've had no luck so far running the football but Saquon Barkley already seven receptions in this game. Make it eight here as he's breaking more tackles but I need to go away from him to be able to pass the football here and it's going to be across the middle. Keon Coleman's got a good grab and with only one corner out there, I want to go out to Wondell Robinson. And we have the edge. And Wondell Robinson's got our first touchdown of the year as our slot corner. We definitely needed that one from him because now it's a 10 to 21 ball game. But my hope is this is a tail of two halves kind of game. We need our offense to explode here and we need our defense to clamp up. And that's going to come with running a lot of zone coverage. It's going to start out with us running cover three here, but they're going to go to the run. And there's a lot of room for Rodriguez, but we come all the way across the field and make a good tackle. And after we traded for Stingley last season, he actually ended up missing six of his eight games for us which did suck but Travis Hunter here is going to be in the hook to curl zone as they go to another run we force it back inside but they're going to have another first down that run was from Jalen Warren who's somebody that we actually went after this year and sexy Dexy finally makes a good stop on the interior he's actually getting out dueled in this game by the way Jonathan Allen's been playing so I'm definitely going to need him to step up in this one as they go to the air out to the outside and why are we so far behind it Bobby Okereke just can't cover right now but in third and five I want to get this ball out as quickly as possible and it's a broken coverage and it is dropped and we are going to be able to get the ball back Dane Belton lined up on the wrong side of the field against the tight end I tried to run him over and thank god Cabe Klubnik doesn't have the awareness yet so our defense finally did it we gotta stop here and Saquon Barkley I need to get him involved in all facets the running game is still not working for us but the one thing I like about our team so far is the fact that we have absolutely no turnovers across the board and Drake may struggled a lot last year with interceptions but that just hasn't been the case this so far but Saquon Barkley to the outside finally we're able to get a run over five yards in this football game so maybe it's the stretch plays that we need to get to work for us as 
we go to the outside one more time saquon barkley's got a good juke and i'll still take four yards at this point but that's going to bring us to the fourth quarter and we need to start airing the ball out down the field more stop taking the check downs if we want to make a comeback in this game and with no high safeties this is where we're going to take a deep shot is we're going to go underneath to wandell robinson on the corner and wandell robinson's able to bring it down at the two yard line i cannot believe that pass fit in there for us but getting us down to the two yard line was huge and we just need to be able to punch it in this time and with saquon barkley not working through the air we're gonna have to pass this one can we lead it that way and it is intercepted i thought about it i said earlier about no turnovers and we finally get a turnover right here there was nobody open and i just tried to force one in the window maybe i should have stepped up and ran instead so this is really where we need to get a stop and brian robinson's got a hole up the middle absolutely jukes out deontay banks and just like that he's in the open field banks is gonna have to give chase and we weren't able to bring him down all the way to the end zone it was one juke move that's all he had to make deontay banks got shaked out of his shoes the score is 28 to 10 at this point so this is definitely not the start we wanted in this football game at all it's been an abysmal start but saquon barkley needs to be the one to maybe bring us back in this one or I do want to take a deep shot to Jalen Hyatt here and we're going to the hurry up already just because I think with time running down already in this ball game I just want to make big plays and we're going to take a deep shot here and that's not going to get in I tried to run that hurry up to keep them in the 4-3 look but it is now third and two and Wondell Robinson is going to be open underneath and he's been having quietly a pretty good day so far maybe not even quietly but that's going to top 80 for him and we're going to continue to try to work our way down the field here and Jalen Hyatt's going to be open on the comeback and it's it's actually jump Forbes jr you saw it all the way I cannot believe we threw another interception with the sliders this hard sometimes the CPU is going to react to our passes before our own wide receivers even do if you look at it here he turned before Jalen Hyatt did that sucks for us on defense so our goal here is to force a punt and not get juked out of our shoes and for the first time we do that as Brian Robinson on 10 carries has 180 yards and two touchdowns in this ball game but they're in a pretty heavy package and the counter plays here and we just need to be able to get to him and we do force him down and i'm only rushing three guys here but they do go to the run we're there with travis hunter if we can get across we can't deontay banks is gonna have to tackle him but not before jalen warren picks up the first down i really wish we were able to get him in free agency but up the middle of fumble is gonna happen and the offensive lineman is gonna be the one that picks it up that was our opportunity to maybe come back in this football game the fumbles are just not gonna happen in this game at all as across the seam travis hunter is gonna get burned and that one's gonna bring them all the way down to the one yard line in this game Cabe club nick is wheeling and dealing on us having his way and so we're going to run commit on the goal line here and they actually go to the air but luckily enough hill is going to be the one that gets the sack so a score here will put this one away but let's try to get a stop underneath and there is going to be a flag and that's going to be pass interference on isaiah simmons and i don't think this is a pass interference i thought the contact was at the same time but at the inches yard line they're going to go to the air again and they should have learned their lesson as dexter lawrence is going to get half a sack the clock's going to continue to whittle down here as they go to the air one more time and we have another sack so i think it's a little too late in this football game right now and Jalen Hyatt's getting absolutely jammed up on the outside Keon Coleman's got a good catch though and I think the problem in this game is that Saquon Barkley got absolutely beat up to start and we're just gonna throw this one away and so we're already in a fourth and ten here I just need us to try to convert it and we're gonna fit it in the window and that's going to be Wondell Robinson again, but I wasn't able to get out of bounds. So we're going to have to hurry this ball up and try to get it all to work here. We're going to go screen to Darren Bellinger. And Belly's got a lot of room here, and I can't get this stiff arm enough to get out of bounds, but that's going to bring it to the two-minute warning. But Keon Coleman's going to be open on the drag, and he's going to push down out to the two-yard line. I want to at least get one more touchdown here in this ball game, And I want to try to be able to get it to Jalen Hyatt on a whip route, and that's great route running from him, and he's going to be the one to be able to punch it in. He's also a receiver that has really struggled for us today in separation. He's been getting jammed off the line almost the entire game. And so down two scores this late, we need to be able to get a stop and an onside kick. And we actually are going to be able to get this. No, we don't get the onside kick. I would love to just have a little bit of hope. The commanders are just going to run the football here again. It'd be great to get a nice tackle, but it's not going to happen. Or a strip would be huge for us. And so the strip is set to aggressive and we're run committing and they actually go to the air and we knocked the ball out last second with Deontay Banks, but they are in field goal range and they're going to try to get another one in here with Myers, but that's going to be wide left. So we still have a little bit of life on our roster right now on our team. And we're going to take another deep shot here to Jalen Hyatt. And that one's not going to be able to be caught. And with the deep pass is still not working, we just need to pick up this first down. And Jalen Hyatt on the crosser is going to grab this one. He's not going to get out of bounds, so we have to go to the hurry up. And we need to get this ball to the sideline as quickly as possible. I'm just going to throw it up to Coleman, but that one's going to be intercepted. It was a weak pass, and I threw it late. And so we got rushed, tried to force the ball. The commanders are going to take a knee, and they're going to walk away with the win in this ball game. And this is definitely not the way we wanted to start off this season. And maybe Drake May's turnover problems are still here. And who knew that Kate Klubnik would come out and shred us across the board? We just weren't able to get 
anything's working. Saquon Barkley was only able to have 46 yards on the ground. And another bad thing coming out of this is Dane Belton's not going to continue his breakout that he had from camp. And our next game is going to be a rivalry game where we have to slow down DeAndre Swift. It's going to turn into a running back matchup as Saquon Barkley also has a breakout opportunity in this game. And with the Philadelphia Eagles winning the toss, so we're going to be the one starting off with the football here, but not in the greatest field position. And so our goal in this game is to have absolutely no turnovers across the board from Drake May at all. I want to incorporate more of the tight ends into the pass game just like that, but that one is a fumble and we already have a turnover in this football game. But luckily, this one's going to a booth review, and that's going to bring our offense back out on the field, so we save ourselves from a horrendous start. So with the second life, here we go, and we're actually just going to scramble up with Drake May, and he's going to have a lot of room. But with no safeties over the top, this is the type of play I think can work for us, and we're going to go up to it. Daniel Bellinger is going to be able to drop the ball, and Belly's off to a really rough start in this football game. And the Eagles got shut out early in the playoffs last year, so our goal this year is to do the exact same, keep them out of the division playoffs, out of the Super Bowl, and bring ourselves to the top of the division. And we be did beat the Philadelphia Eagles twice last year, so our hope is to do that again. But they're going up and over the top here, and that's going to be a huge catch given up. But what beat the Philadelphia Eagles last year was the ability to stop the run and force Jalen Hurts to pass the football. And so that's going to be our goal again today. But the pressure is definitely going to be to get there. Is they're going to go out to Swift. We're going to be able to rally and tackle on this one, hopefully. And on a third and six, we're going to bring some insane pressure to get the ball out. And that's actually going to work. And the Eagles are going to be forced to take a field goal. But instead, they're actually going to go for it here. And we're going to bring the pressure. And Stingley's gonna get the interception our first one of the year I got excited spamming triangle hit the hurdle but nonetheless we picked off Jalen Hurts to start this football game I am so happy that he is back and healthy for us and we're gonna start off with Saquon Barkley on the ground who's got a massive gain up the field almost out to the 50 yard line and he has almost got half of the rushing yards that he did last week starting off the season we are number 32 in the league in rushing offense and I do want to change that and I think that's gonna help Drake May and help limit our turnovers in this game my worry is this Philadelphia Eagles defensive line is absolutely insane but we're still having our way right now Roman Wilson good blocking on the outside and we're gonna try to catch him slipping here with a read option they don't bite but the hole's still there for Saquon Barkley and I will run him all the way down the field if I need to but with them stacking the box we're gonna go to the air and Belly's finally gonna have his first nice reception where he doesn't fumble and doesn't drop it and we traded away Darren Waller last season because I really thought he could be the answer for us at the tight end position and I'm really gonna need to see a lot out of him or Brevin Jordan's gonna start to take more ones reps for us but a 70 over Overall, he's really not going to be the answer for us is he struggled to block there and Saquon Barkley is going to go down with another injury. So, so in two weeks, he's already gotten injured twice. So here comes in Eric Gray and he gets absolutely swallowed up. So we're just going to take the three points here. And it is nice to walk away with three points, but Saquon Barkley is going to be out with a quadricep strain in this game. So that means Eric Gray and Pierre Strong are going to split time again today as they go to a run. Dane Belton's not fast enough and he actually misses the tackle and DeAndre Swift's out to the open field. And that's already the fourth run this year that we've let up for over 20 yards. And the thought process behind the six man blitz is I want to be able to to get the ball out as quickly as possible here but Jalen Hurts here is going to test Dane Belton down the sideline and this one's going to be mossed by no other than DeAndre Swift and so Nicky Nowarney is going to come in at safety because I can't handle Dane Belton right now anymore we just need to be able to limit the big plays that's what we need to do in this ball game and running the football is going to be a lot harder here as Saquon Barkley was such a big piece to our team Pierre Strong's going to have the catch on the outside he's actually got a little bit of speed to him and he's going to make it a much manageable third and four with Wondell Robinson one-on-one -on -one to the outside we're going to have him sit and he's going to bring in this hitch route and he's going to be making guys miss and if we didn't hit that extra juke move I think he would have a chance to break that one he's had a hot start for us so far this year his belly is going to be open on the sideline if we can't be able to make many moves with him but that's going to bring us the end of the first quarter and looking at the stats it's pretty even across the board we just need to be able to finish drives I am going to try to go back to the run here on this stretch and we do have a little bit of space and Pierre Strong's got a good run for a first down and the one play that's working very very nicely for us right now is going to be the corner route to Jalen Hyatt I was going to say the stretch play to the outside but that play works and we're going to be down on the two yard line and these are the plays that we need to be able to punch into the end zone we are going to try here with Pierre Strong up the middle first but that's not going to work he gets suplexed and I'm looking at a quick pick here to Bellinger to be able to get into the end zone if we could just get him up the field and beat him but that's not going to work either and I want to be able to see if this is going to work for us Jalen Hyatt the whip route and he's going to get in for the end zone so he got us down there and he's going to be the one that's going to finish it off for us that play is going to be a great one for us as we continue deep into this season and we've gotten burned and burned 
zone and man coverage again and again. And DeAndre Swift's got a crazy run to the outside. We need to be able to bring him down. But on cover two, we couldn't get anything working either. Our linebackers are having no way. And I said going into the season, it was going to be a weak point for us. And it's really showing here at this part. Maybe Isaiah Simmons is the problem for us. Is it going to slant route underneath? And it's just completely dropped. And on the second and 10 here, they're going to go back to the run again. And actually, Jalen Hurts is going to keep this one. Bryce Huff's going to beat him to the outside, but he's still going to have enough for the first. And so it only took him a couple plays, and they're already across midfield here. Xavier McKinney coming down for a good tackle. He wasn't able to finish the job once again. And they're looking like the 2023 Giants. We haven't had any luck tackling so far, but that's going to be a good breakup. And so on third and nine, we're bringing the six-man blitz. We need to be able to get out, and Deontay Banks is going to have the interception this time. We have had Jalen Hurts' number every single time we played him so far. And after Deontay Banks' third career interception against Jalen Hurts, we're already put into a third and 13. We tried running once, didn't work, and then an incompletion. And Wondell Robinson on the outside is going to be able to make the grab. No P drops in. We're already punting this football away. And we only burned a little bit of time off the clock. So we have two interceptions on Jalen Hurts already. We need to get another one here. But instead, he's actually pulling this run to the outside. And why can't we just bring him down? And he's already got him across midfield. And I was just a second late reacting. But the Eagles are going to go to the air. And with Jalen Hurts scrambling, he's going to put the ball up. He's got him burned. And we couldn't break it up, and Devonta Smith's going to be down at the 7-yard line. Jalen Hurts' stat line so far is absolutely crazy. 100 yards, 2 interceptions, and only a couple attempts on the day. As they go to the air one more time, and he threw it right behind Singleton. I mean Stingley, but A.J. Brown's going to get into the end zone here to make it a 14-10 to ball game. With 3 minutes left here in the first half, I want to put another score on the board. I think that's going to be crucial for us right now, and we're going to throw this one out to Jalen Hyatt, and he's going to drop this. So I want to try to go to him here again, and maybe we could sit it down. He does make the catch this time and this is where i am gonna go to the hurry up i want to try to run this football here underneath we haven't been a bad spot and strong's gonna have a good run here for five and so the two minute warning is here and we have all of our timeouts and i'm actually gonna test wandell robinson up over top and he's not able to bring it in he's one-on-one -on -one with hassan reddick and somehow can't figure out a way to outrun him so now third and five we need to get, get the conversion here and the sack comes through andrew thomas can't get any good protection and we had less than two seconds on that throw but presley harvin's gonna try to pin them deep but they're still gonna have the opportunity opportunity to return it we're gonna come down with travis hunter go for the hit stick and that's not gonna work but the eagles now may have enough time if they want to try to do something here across the middle and they're gonna burn us in this cover three and they're already at midfield i'm making sure now for a man on man team i want to have our matchup set by speed but I don't know who had Smith there on our team, but he got wide open and he's going to get in for a touchdown. And I don't know what Stingley was doing here, but he just bolted across the field to absolutely nobody. Everybody else was already in coverage. So it went from, hey, let's maybe push the ball downfield to we definitely need to push the ball downfield here. But after that Eric Gray drop, I just want to get a completion on this one. And Belly's going to be the one that have it. And we're going to stay in bounds because just in case I want to make sure this clock's going to run. And let's see what we can do with it. I'm running a drag to the other side now. And we're just going to take off with Drake May. Get up the field and he's got the first down. And maybe you could say this is bad clock management, but I was so worried about giving the ball back to the Eagles here. Because honestly, this is a very, very manageable score for us. But Travis Hunter is going to get absolutely picked off here. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, Darius Slay is going to get this one, break a couple tackles, and he's going to have the ball at the 42-yard line. The way the AI react in this game is absolutely insane as they go underneath and we're able to break it up. But with the pass reaction set to 100, it makes it almost impossible. But luckily enough, there's no damage done in terms of a touchdown, but they still are going to attempt a field goal here. And this one's going to be wide left so we're just going to go into halftime with the score that could have been but i still do want to try to test a hail mary why because why not and we're going to throw this one deep to the end zone here it's going to maybe be overthrown and knocked down we may have two interceptions in this ball game but the eagles are just completely outplaying us especially through the air and to make it worse the eagles start the half with the ball and we're going to continue to bring the blitz here on them and xavier mckinley is going to have a good tackle on the outside and we're going to need our secondary to step up in this game especially coming from our captain if we want to make it and that's just going to be a lot of blitz across the board that's what we need to do blitz the football force him to make bad throws and this one goes underneath and is caught i think if we could just force one more interception that would be huge and again did you see stingley there he ran all the way across the field right away and it was actually travis hunter i wonder if there's some glitch going on right now in madden because he left way too soon i had the man coverage set to speed but we're now going to send it by a depth chart because i think that's going to be how we're going to do it but dexy dexy gets a good stop there on the inside and that's going to set up a long third down and that's definitely going to see the eagles trying to pass the foot and it happened again are you kidding me 
I just don't know what's going on with Madden and these glitches right now, but it's screwing over our franchise mode. So I set it back to auto for right now, so hopefully it doesn't become an issue again. But what is going to be an issue is DeAndre Swift getting loose down the sideline into the 10-yard line. And once again, we need to run all the way over with Stingley to try to make it to work. And we do get a sack, luckily, with Dante Core alone coming in to make the play. And it really just feels like our defense is just lost across the board. We have no way to get anything working. We can't even tackle here. Thank goodness Xavier McKinney is able to fix it up. But we need to force them to a field goal here. That's exactly exactly what we need to do and it's Dante Corlone actually Bryce Huff coming in for a sack and we're gonna force them to a field goal it's been but don't break in this game but it is a 14 point score going into the middle of the third quarter and to maybe provide a spark I did bench Darrington Evans and we're gonna have Travis Hunter come back and do kick returns for us and he's gonna be able to get a good one here and the Eagles have more than double our yards in this game so far and Daniel Bellinger's open across the middle and that's gonna be a good grab and we started off this game hot but we've completely fallen off at this point as Wondell Robinson's gonna be open again and Wondell Robinson's got the speed on the sideline and the simple combination is able to beat the zone coverage here. And what happened there is the corner ran deep with the shriek and the corner slid underneath of that. And Wondell Robinson's able to get a huge touchdown here in this ball game. And the lead seemed a little bit worrisome, but coming back to us quickly in the game and making it a seven point game is huge, but it's going to be getting a lot harder as Dector Lawrence is going to miss some time now with an injury. But with muscle cramps, I need to bring him back into this game. I don't want to fall to 0-2 to open up this season, especially against two division rivals. And Devonta Smith's absolutely burning us so far. Swift's breaking a tackle, but that's Corey Foreman, who did get a little bit of time with us last year, but I guess we're playing him more now today with the Christian Harris missing and skipping plays, but he's going to be able to do some good work for us on the inside as they go back to the air here. And it's underneath, and this one's on me. I miss him as Swift's going to have all day to run, and we can't freaking bring him down. I thought he was going to break out right there. I completely thought he was going to break out right, but he broke back inside and completely juked me out. And maybe trash talking the Eagles coming back into this game didn't work as that was a complete pick play but Dallas Goddard's gonna have the touchdown I feel like at this point in the game our best players are just not getting onto the field as we're gonna take a bad sack here in this one I was waiting for that wrap to develop but it just didn't here we just hit again as we throw and so already backed up to a third and 17 now this is where our life gets a little bit miserable I'm gonna try to throw it up to Jalen Hyatt and the movement's there and Jalen Hyatt's able to bring it in and we're gonna keep this team on the field I want to go hurry up I want to go down the field make sure everything's all good and it's gonna be a draw play to try to catch him slipping and strong's got a good run and that's what we needed in this ball game here and so going into the fourth quarter we're down two scores but this is how we get back we need the big plays like Jalen Hyatt to keep us in this ball game I am gonna go hurry up a little bit throughout this fourth quarter just to try to keep them in certain personnel groupings that I do like here because Wondell Robinson should be open right underneath and he does drop it so on third and 10, we are going to go to the screenplay to try to get it to work. Draw them all the way back. Great blocks on the outside. We need that juke move to get there because the blocks didn't. And so on fourth and five, it's all right here. We need to be able to make the stop and we try to throw it up. But Blankenship's got the interception. I tried to get Blankenship to run with Travis Hunter, but that didn't work. Now we definitely need stops here and Swift to the outside. We're going to get there with Simmons if we can finish tackles. As on just 18 passes, Jalen Hurts has already got almost 300 passing yards in this ballgame so far. And DeAndre Swift on nine carries already has 92 rushing yards it's just been that kind of game for us here is Nick Emmerwari is going to come down with a good tackle and I'm going to need those kind of plays from the rookie now that he's starting over Dane Belton at least for right now but this is probably the biggest third down of the game so far and the pressure is coming and we need to be able to make the tackle but Dane Belton isn't able to get there and so any more yardage would put them into field goal range and Isaiah Simmons makes a good tackle but I'm desperately worried about starting this season 2-0 and as we get burned again AJ Brown makes it Derek Stingley looks stupid here as they're on the 12 yard line and with them now in shoe clock it makes this life a lot harder but Stingley comes up with a huge interception and he's still up and I don't know how that interception came through but we still have life in this ball game here as Jordan Mailata now goes down with an injury and for some reason we always have the number of Jalen Hurts it's as simple as it is we have his number and we're going to try to run down the field here and I want to take a deep shot early on this first and 10 they're pressing across the board maybe Jalen Hyatt's going to be another one we try to go after and I am going to go after him and he is open Jalen Hyatt versus James Bradbury I'll take the 95 speed Jalen Hyatt all day and just like that we turn a turnover into now a one score ball game with a lot of time still left to play in this one this is huge for us and even though Jalen Hurts has four touchdowns on the day I would love to also give him four interceptions that's the kind of energy I want right now and that's a 
bad missed tackle from Travis Hunter. Sexy Dexy finishes it up. This is all comes down to this drive here. We need to be able to make the stops. I'm running with the underneath, and Jalen Hurts is going to take off, and that's another good tackle, this time coming out from the linebacker Christian Harris. So just like that, they're already in a third and nine here, and I'm bringing Blitz again, just like I have for about 75, 80% of this game, and we're going to run out with it. And he's going to throw a cross body, and Emer Wari, I went for the SWAT. I wanted to confirm the SWAT. The interception would have been nice, but I just wanted to make sure we could force a breakup, and we're going to get the ball back here. That was such a good pass breakup by the rookie. This is the kind of energy that we need here, and we're going to try to run this one back, and it's going to start about the 37-yard line, so we still have a lot of life in this one. So it all comes out right now. We need to be able to stay alive here in this ball game, and nobody's open. We're going to start throwing this one away. After a good run by Eric Gray to set up a third and two, we're going to go right back to him underneath, and he's got the good other first down on a good run. Jordan Davis goes down with an injury, so that's going to burn an Eagles timeout, and they're just playing no overhanging linebackers. One on one inside, and that's going to give Strong another good run up the middle, and I'll continue to run it like this in crunch time if they're going to do no over-the-top linebackers. But on the next play, we jumped off sides. And so in 1st and 15, we're going to go to the play action here and throw it to the outside. And Daniel Bellinger's got a good grab on the sideline. And so on 3rd and 6, we're actually going to set up the screen here and try to get to work. And we didn't get it off. And that's going to set up a horrible sack in this one. And I'm going to try to take a comeback route here to Jalen Hyatt to make sure we can get it to work. And he does. And that's the play of the game. Jalen Hyatt's been balling out late for us in this one. As he tops 200 passing yards or receiving yards in this game. And we're going to go back to him again here. And Jalen Hyatt's going to get into the end zone. This is the first 200-yard receiver in Giants franchise. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is the first time we've had a wide receiver get two touchdowns in a single game for us. That's the type of streak we've been on in our passing game for the past season and a half. And we are going to take the field goal here. I'm not going to go for it. I don't want to force it to overtime. Jake Elliott against his former team is going to put that one in. And so I really don't know. Are the Eagles going to take this to overtime? But are they going to go through the air? And they are going to go to the air. But they're actually letting the clock dwindle down here. 40 seconds, 39. The clock continues to go and we're gonna go underneath with Travis Hunter and we almost had the interception and I know I'm risky bringing the blitz but I just want to be able to force the ball out as quickly as possible because I don't trust it and the Eagles are gonna go to another hurry up and they're now down to 10 seconds in this ball game and they go underneath again and we're just there to make the easy tackle and I think it looks like we're going to take this one to overtime. So going into overtime, the stats in this game are insane. Somehow we were able to come back against the Philadelphia Eagles on the back of Jalen Hyatt. But going into the coin toss, we did win and we are going to elect to receive. So if we score here, it's game over. And honestly, luck has just been on our side in this one is we're going to try to get a good return out. It's not the best one in the world. So we're going to go back to the screen. Hopefully we don't mess it up this time and we don't. And if these blocks can hit, we're going to have a lot of space. Pierre is strong. Just take it out of bounds. And Drake May is now almost at four. 400 passing yards in this one and after the incompletion we're going to go to the read option here up the middle and that's going to get us a couple yards but we're already now into a third and nine and we need to get to the 39 yard line and if we can get to the outside Wendell Robinson's open here and he's going to get up for the first down so we're going to keep it alive and I'm also trying to drain clock as we do this because the last thing I want in this ball game right now is to just have the Eagles win on a last second field goal because at this point I'd be okay with even a tie every one of our receivers has had a great game so far in this one even belly at tight end's been doing pretty good and that truck's going to make it a third at inches. And we're going to give the Eagles a taste of their own medicine with a tush push right here. And he's going to be a fumble. And that's going to make it fourth and one. But there is a booth review on the fumble. If it does count as a fumble, it's a fourth and one. If it doesn't count as a fumble, that should be a first down for us. And that should definitely be the first. And so luckily the play was going in our favor. And we do continue to have the ball here. And we're going to up and over the top. And can we get it in? We can't to Keon Coleman. I'm just going to check it down to Pierre Strong, who's got a catch. And he's going to be able to get a field to make it a third and two. And man manageable for us and I'm so excited with how this game's gone so far Keon Coleman's gonna have a huge catch here on third down and we're just milking our way all the way down the field here Drake May's gonna have a run and he's just gonna slide down and that's gonna set up a play action all I want here is Brevin Jordan to get out into the flat but I actually see him Jalen Hyatt three touchdowns and that's absolutely game for the New York Giants we got single-handedly carried to victory by one receiver absolutely breaking out Jalen Hyatt's gonna be the future of the New York Giants this is the type of games you saw from him in college but I never expected him to have these types of games in the NFL for us. And I lost connection to EA servers after, so no matter what, we're forcing ourselves a win here. You saw it firsthand. And I love that EA servers just completely crashed on us. We lost all progress in the game right as we won it at overtime. And EA may have made it 28-14, to 14, but we're never going to forget the performance that we saw Jalen Hyatt put on. But in this game, it still gave him 134, but no touchdowns to his name. And I don't know how to feel about this, but Saquon Barkley was back and ran a full game for him. But nonetheless, we move on to week 3 of the season. And because we beat the Eagles, we got plus 10 miracles.
morale, but we're going up against the New England Patriots, and they have Nick Chubb now, but thanks to injuries, we're still going up against Mac Jones, and we're going to set our scouting focus across the board to tight end, because I don't know if Daniel Bellinger is going to be the future for us. Going into the draft this year, I don't know how strong this tight end class is going to be. But we do have some upgrade points. For Andrew Thomas, we only got pass block finesse. But for Travis Hunter at corner, we're obviously going to put it to man-to-man. -man, and these stats are going to be applied to both the receiver version and the corner version. And the ability slot being there is a great sign. And playing at home, it's nice to have one of the first games ever in Giants franchise. We're a higher overall team than the team we're playing against. But we did lose a toss and Darrington Evans is going to have to start us off here with a kick return. He hasn't had the same mobility and impact that we saw last season. So that's where maybe I pull the trigger and have Travis Hunter start returning for us. But Saquon Barkley starting us on the ground with a good run. With 78 yards in week two and 43 yards in week one, maybe this is the time where we can finally get him over 100. And so backed up into a second and eight, we're going to go to a Daniel Bellinger screen. And if we can get the block to get there and Andrew Thomas, no, that's Smith that gets there. Bellinger's going to get all the way up to make it a third and one. And even though they stack the box, we're going to give it off to Saquon Barkley here. And Keon Coleman's even coming into block. So we are looking hot here on our first try, but we do go to a play action here. And Brevin Jordan on the outside's got a good grab but he's gonna go down with an injury so instead of in Lawrence Cager and these press situations the corners put us in are awesome I want to be able to attack him more but the pass is gonna be complete to Saquon Barkley on an angle route and we're driving in this game but Brevin Jordan's gonna be out and Albert O's actually gonna come in instead of Lawrence Cager but it's time to go to the screen to Wondell Robinson here on the outside and Keon Coleman's such a good blocker on the outside and so hopefully this is gonna finish a perfect drive for us and we're gonna go to the end zone here and Hyatt's got it for a touchdown so we're gonna try to continue his hot streak that he's had so far far this year yeah the stats got wiped out from week two but we all know how good he is but there is going to be a booth review on this touchdown and looking at it his feet may not have been in we got one we got two that should be a touchdown and so it is going to count and we're going to kick this field goal to start off this game seven nothing and our defense was the strong point for us last season but this season they haven't so far but sexy dexy starts it off strong and it's nice to have him back from injury that's going to be huge for us as they go out here to nick chubb and he's going to make one guy miss and nick amarwari is going to get the tackle and expect him to get a lot of playing time today on this third and five they go to the air and it's caught and it's going to be enough for the first and that catch came out from former Ohio State wide receiver Manuel Buka as they go to a screenplay here and Nick and Marwari were coming over to bottle it up and it really seems like the New England Patriots completely rebuilt their receiving room but Nick Chubb to the outside and Belton's going to hold him from the first as their starting receivers are Emmanuel Buka, Juju Smith-Schuster as well as Alec Pierce the former Colts wide receiver but on the third and one they're going to the air we're going to be out with it and Isaiah Simmons is there to bottle it up and there hasn't been an incompletion yet from any quarterback but we're the ones who started off with a score as Saquon Barkley up the middle is going to get a couple. And we're going to stick with it again. Another inside zone. And there's a lot of space here. Saquon Barkley hit the sprint button immediately. We're able to make a couple guys miss. But we're all the way out now to the 35-yard line. And with no corners out there, we're going to go to an immediate swing pass to Barkley and just have him beat a guy one-on-one. -on -one and the spin isn't working. But Daquan Jones goes down with an injury on the interior defensive line for the Patriots. So I'm coming out and running right at his back up here. But the hole's clogged up and Barkley's only able to get two. But the nice thing is we're already at 50 yards with him. And I'm going to scramble out here with Drake May. I see one. Wondell Robinson, but I'm not going to force it. Jalen Hyatt was open on the drag, but I was worried about throwing the ball across my body, and I didn't quite see him until it was too late. So we're going to have to punt this ball back to the Patriots here, and Jones is making two guys miss, but they're going to start with the 30-yard line. And I still can't believe the Patriots are sticking with Mac Jones here as he just cuts back here. Nick Chubb's got a good game. That's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter, and we're looking pretty solid so far, but I didn't realize their quarterback that got injured was actually Marcus Mariota, so it wasn't a big-name quarterback. I thought they went out and drafted one, but in simple Mac Jones fashion, and he's four for four for four passing yards. That's about it. And he misses this one right here. We're going to be able to make it a third and 11. And we're going to bring a six man pressure against a five man offensive line. And the pressure is going to get there as that's James Williams. And we're going to pick it up with BJ Hill. And BJ Hill's going to have an entourage leading with him. And he's going to get into the touchdown diving in. And it really seems like Mac Jones is just taking step by step back in his career. I don't expect him to be the quarterback next year. But second year of safety, James Williams at six foot four, 225, makes the play of the day so far for us. So now can our defense continue to bottle them up? Dane Belton, who's getting some time, but he's not going to be playing as much today with Nick Amarawari taking the start, but he comes up and makes a good TFL. And really, I want to make Mac Jones beat us. It's as simple as that. We're going to go there and Banks gets the interception. Mac Jones is just not it. And Banks may have the first pick six in Giants franchise but he's not able to get it there. And just in a couple of swings, two turnovers from the New England Patriots and typical New England Patriots fashion, we're going to be inside the red zone one more time. So here we go. We're inside of the red zone already. And Saquon Barkley is going to be very open in the flats. Can we make one juke move? We do. And he's going to put us down under the four yard line. And if we can get this read option to work, we should be able to get in the end zone, but it doesn't. And the Patriots are losing another defensive lineman and Yannick Ngakwe in this game. The Patriots defense is actually nuts. If you really think about it, the players that they have and Barkley's just breaking tackles, but he's not able to 
to get in. It's just that this Patriots defense is getting put into really bad situations, and Belly's going to get the touchdown right here on the little spot route, so we're already up 21 nothing. So the New England Patriots so far only have one passing yard. That's it, and they're going to get maybe only two or three more here as we're coming up to make a good tackle. So they're already in another third down situation, and they're going to go out to the outside, and he's not going to have enough for the first, and we're just going to get this ball back. This Patriots offense is even worse than I think they've ever been, and according to overall, they do have the absolute worst offense in the league this year, and Belly's going to get a good stiff arm here. It's awesome in this game to be winning the turnover battle so far as Barkley's going to have another run, but he's not going to get enough for the first down, and we're definitely getting a holding call here that's going to back us up. And that one's going to be on Andrew Thomas, and it's his first one of the year, but the New England Patriots are losing another defensive player in this game due to injury. Second and 15, we're just going to dump it off to Albert O for his first catch of the year. So on third down and long, we're going to go to a screenplay here to try to get it to work. We need to beat him to the edge, and if we could just cut it back, that's not going to be enough, and we're going to punt this football away. It feels weird playing with the lead, something we haven't done a lot through the first two seasons of Giants franchise, especially with a 21-point lead. I can't be saying much, as they're going to go to a pass here to Hunter Henry, who's got the grab, and he's going to make it second and inches. I am thinking about putting Deontay Banks into the slot. I think that'll be better for us, and moving Travis Hunter to the outside, but that's going to be something I'm really going to have to look at and see how that progresses, because Travis Hunter does not have better tackling than some of the other guys on our team, as they throw it underneath, and Juju Smith-Schuster makes it third and inches. The Patriots are considering this hurry up here, but they're actually going to do a draw play underneath, and Nick Chubb's actually having quietly a pretty good day, and after they finally burn a timeout, they are going to go back to the air, and we do get burnt on the sideline, but that's a bad throw by Mac Jones. And we're rolling our safeties. We're playing them down, because they cannot throw the ball deep, and actually, two big trucks coming out and Travis Hunter has to give chase and just like that Nick Chubb gets into the end zone and I was talking about how good Deontay Banks tackling was but there it looked kind of rough but maybe I'll give him a pass because that is Nick Chubb one of the best running backs in the league and I still can't believe the Cleveland Browns let him walk I know he was coming off an injury there but still he's one of the best running backs in the league went healthy and with Ezekiel Elliott finally retiring that's probably the best move for them there as Belly makes another good juke move and looking at the stats the Patriots are pretty even with us but it's the turnover differential that has made this game so far. The only bad part in this game is the Patriots got the ball back to start and we have nobody covering the tight end underneath and he's going to be able to run up for a little bit and that's Adam Troutman and he's actually had two catches for negative two yards in this game so that was his first good catch but it's going to be Nick Chubb getting enough for the first but this year we just had kind of had running backs have their way with us as they go four verticals and actually break this one off and Juju's got the catch. I need our defense to make a stop here. Yeah it's been awesome to get interceptions but maybe a third and out would be something new to us because if it wasn't for turnovers in the Eagles game and this game today we would be definitely struggling but it is a third and four we're bringing Travis Hunter on the blitz up the middle and we had a free run at the quarterback but James Williams wasn't good enough in coverage but it is second and ten and across the board, we're going to have another interception here. Travis Hunter is going to get his first of the year. And our secondary is elite. He's going to get up and run, but not for much there. So that's the second interception of the ball game for us. Two interceptions, one for his fumble. And we are dominating the league right now in the secondary. Travis Hunter getting his first one of his career and hopefully many more for us. And the cool thing is his dead trade is going to be released very, very soon. But Saquon Barkley to the outside, not going for much. And look at the kind of attention that Jalen Hyatt's garnering. Double coverage on the outside there so we're definitely not going to throw it his way but the sack is coming through and Andrew Thomas completely whiffed on Quincy Roche so on third down I want to throw to the sticks here we're going to go underneath and that's going to be Jalen Hyatt dropping the ball it's poor accuracy coming out and the Patriots are going to start with pretty good field position and with Bailey Zapp not here there's really nobody to turn to in this kind of situation here unless you want Marcus Mariota throwing the football but here we go on third down the ball's coming out and we're all able to break it up last second but we're going to lose Micah McFadden to injury hopefully he's not out for too long but we finally do force a three and out. We haven't scored yet in the third quarter. Let's put together a pretty good drive here. We're going to start with Bellinger on the outside. And Drake Mays had a really good day throwing the football to start. He's 12 of 14 as Jalen Hyatt's got a good grab, making him 13 of 15 for 115 and two tutties. But the goal is to get Saquon Barkley over 100 yards, something we haven't done so far this year. And he's got enough to make it a third and one. But I'm not going to run it. We're going to go to the air here, quick to the outside. And that one's almost jumped. I tried to force that ball there on third and one. I should have just run it with Saquon Barkley. And with Preston, Harbor, we've got a great punt to pin them back, but it bounces into the end zone. And I guess what I would like to see in this game is maybe a pass over 10 yards for the New England Patriots. Is it really that hard? Dane Belton giving chase to stop the first down. He's going to get it, make it a third and one. And even though we stalled out, we still have a two score lead. So I just want to preserve it and stop the New England Patriots on this drive. And they start by auditing out to the single eye here, and they're going to run it up the middle. Actually, go play action. We're going to have the blitzer, and Corey Foreman's going to get the sack. I wasn't expecting him to get that much playing time this year, but with our defense struggling, I've been running a little bit more 4 4 and letting him get in the ball game. 
So it's time for Darrington Evans to revitalize our offense here on a nice punt return. And he's got the edge and he's going to get us all the way out to midfield. And it's the returns like that that make me want to keep him in and not switch to Travis Hunter. But a touchdown here. That's the goal. We're going to go out to Wanda Robinson and that one's jumped. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you throw a football game because I needed this one so bad to go down, revitalize our offense, get a touchdown. Instead, we give the Patriots the ball at the 12-yard line. And I just wanted to have a game without one interception. That's the way it's been so far as Banks just jumped that. I, I was going for the swap with Stingley. I cannot believe that was intercepted. And I didn't even watch it. I need to see what happened here. Banks just completely jumped it while being in coverage on Emmanuel Abuka. And so in two games, we have three interceptions back to back. That's absolutely insane. But I can't have any more turnovers here on this drive as Barkley's going to get to the open field, get a nice juke to the outside, and we're not able to break that one. But we are closing in on the 100 yards rushing mark. So we're going to keep it on the ground here. Actually, throw it out to Wandell Robinson because the bubble was there and he's got a good gain. So this game's been all in our favor so far besides the interception and we're gonna go up and over the top here alberto he cannot juke for anything at all but the face mask does come out and that's gonna let us almost have the ball inside the red zone we're gonna go out to wandell robinson again who's gonna get up for a good gain and that slot receiver he's been awesome for us so far this year one player who hasn't got a lot of time today is keon coleman and i want to try to go to him here and that's gonna be broken up anytime i want to throw deep it's really a 50 50 whether our offensive line holds up but on third and four we have to convert and i'm gonna try to throw it underneath and that's jumped a again reaction time just can't be there and i just cannot make those kinds of throws and i need to stop leading passes because it's been absolutely no help for us so far in this game as the comeback route's going to be there again for the new england patriots and i don't know if you can tell i'm just so mad with how this game has transpired from drake may i really thought it was going to be a perfect game and on second and 10 mac jones is going to throw to the outside and we're going to have an easy no he breaks the tackle and he's going to break another one he's going to get all the way up the field here so the former new york giant paris campbell with a great play there out to the outside and singley's got the interception mac jones is absolutely horrible and if we could just get the first interception return in Giants franchise, that'd be awesome. Right here, Derek Stingley down the sideline, and he's going to end this football game right here. In typical Mac Jones fashion, his accuracy has been all over the place. We've been able to pick him off, and let's do it one more time. That would be so much fun. Is actually, Deontay Banks gets burned on a wheel route here. We're not able to bring him down, and they're already up across midfield all the way out to the 33. But if we could not allow 20 more passing yards, we'd actually finish the game here with some <laughs> under holding a quarterback under 200 yards. Never mind. And we're going to go to the zone here on second down and they're gonna throw underneath and we're there to make a tackle juju breaks one he's fighting his way into the end zone and he actually gets there running through james williams of all people the six foot four 220 pound safety luckily it is still a two score game but they're going for the onside kick here i brought out our hands team and let's see if we can just recover it and send this game to be over and what a great play by Keon Coleman. Hasn't got a lot of receptions today, but that's a big play coming out from him. And all we need here is just a couple first downs to put this one away. And Saquon Barkley, if we could just get the block from Andrew Thomas, would have been perfect. But I'm already milking the clock here as Barkley's going to get up the middle for another good gain, making it a third and two. And so on third down, we're going to read option. It is going to be a pull read here. Drake May... We got him confused. Drake made down the stay in bounds. He fumbled it. Are you kidding me? He fumbled. I tried to stay in bounds. Anytime I get tackled with Drake May, it's been a fumble so far. Dallas Cowboys game last year was an absolute killer. Oh, and he was down. We need to take that to booth review. And looking at it, it's not allowing us to challenge. But looking at it here, his knee seemed to be down. And even on top of that, it touched a player while the player was out of bounds. So it should definitely be in our favor here. And they're going to go to the air right away. This is killing me here. We have a free rusher. And Derek Sealing is going to make the play on the outside. Abuka is going to be forced down. But I thought we were going to hold Mac Jones under 200 yards today. But that's not the case. Instead, we're getting held. And Paris Campbell's off to the races here in this one. And this all becomes a one-point game. I tried to get off the block here with Banks, but he wouldn't let me. And Paris Campbell takes this one all the way. The Patriots still have all three of their timeouts here. So we just need a first down. And Saquon Barkley. I needed him to stay in bounds, so we forced him to burn it, and they will. But they also got the two-minute warning to help him, so this is going to make it a little bit more dangerous, and Barkley gets held, and he fumbles the football. This is an absolute masterclass on how to blow a football game, but this is going to booth review. He's definitely down this time, so please, refs, make the right call. Take this to review. His elbow forces the fumble. We're running an RPO here on third and one, and we just need to get the first down. Barkley's going to be able to get it, and he's actually going to make it a fourth and inches. Play call said to go for it. We're going to run a QB sneak, and hopefully this tush push works. 
and Drake May is able to get it. No, he gets stopped. Bearmore on the inside. We're just completely throwing away this game. I don't know about you, but those yard markers make it seem like we should have already had the first. And nonetheless, I still think we got it. So this is absolutely killing me in this football game as they go screen to the outside and the blockers are there and we're going to be able to force them out. And at this point, if we lose, it's destiny. I cannot believe the game has gone this way so far for us. And they're actually going to run the football backside. Corey Foreman, please make the tackle. And Mac Jones cannot win this game with four interceptions on the day. It just shouldn't happen as we're there to break it up last second with Travis Hunter. And we're going to bring the blitz force this one here on this third and two. They still have one timeout to play with. Man's coming in motion. And we're looking at the underneath the spot routes there. And we break it up again with Travis Hunter. And we're bringing the blitz here. And they're going to go to the run. And Sexy Dexy bottles it up. That's going to be the ball game. I'm taking a knee. I'm done. I'm out. We got screwed over by the refs. And that's going to bring this game to a finale. And with everything going wrong in the second half, we somehow escaped this game with a victory. And Mac Jones still balled out with 320 passing yards. And Drake May, I need to stop throwing interceptions with him. But nice thing is Saquon Barkley actually got 100 yards rushing. In receiving, we did spread the ball out a lot. But I can't believe the game our D-backs put on. This is what we were looking for when we went out and drafted Travis Hunter. And after that game, we got more upgrade points for him. We're going to put it on man-to-man. -man. We got some plus ones, plus the plus four play recognition, which is huge. And the first mock draft is out, and it has us taking Caden Proctor, a tackle out of Alabama. We do have some trade offers coming in for Wandell Robinson, Micah McFadden, as well as BJ Hill in the middle. But we still got a long season ahead of us with a lot of trades to make. So if there's any trades that you want to see, make sure to let me know. But if you're new here, make sure to subscribe because more Giants franchise is coming. And if you missed year number one, there's only short form available videos. So make sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for updates.